jumped in. Um, Okay, let's go with number one, please. Wesley, um, you, yeah. you and you. Yeah. Well, yeah, whenever I did it, I, uh, <laughs> I, like, I, want to, I want to be part of the question, always seeing like how to develop in India, so that's what I did, so that's what I know about. I don't know about Tibet and like. That's okay. That's why I'm uh, But yeah, the way it like, came about in India was um, they, um, so pretty much. The Siddhas, or however you say that, they um they kind of rejected the way they seen the, the establishment of what is that word? Samha. Yeah, they rejected it because um like the monks, the monks became pe uh, people that looked at they wanted to be more seen more of like a professor of philosophy than they did like um helping the development of spirituality or like they wanted they didn't really care about being seen as an exemplary spiritual figure. So the Siddhas, they um, they left and they uh, uh, they developed uh, some monasteries. Or actually, wait, what is it? Oh, um, the Siddhas became Ma Maha Siddhas, which were like, great saints and they're spiritual innovators, and they they like experimented with a very distinct form of meditation, which felt like they. They um, focused on the deities of the Mahayana, and um, they believe that they can reach enlightenment in a like one lifetime, as opposed to like taking several lifetimes to like reach enlightenment. Yeah. The Vajrayana. Yeah. This man. This man. Can tell me the difference among these trees. What is the difference between Rada and Aina, the gold? Theravada yes. and Sir. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Theravada, they're trying to become Arhats because okay. they don't believe in. Yeah. Mayana is the goal to become a Buddha. Okay, how about this one? That one's asked to become a Buddha, but like super fast, like that. Okay, what's the Vajra? Uh, Vajra? The diamond. The yeah, diamond thunderbolt. And I'm a, why is it called almond? Well, the diamond is like the mineral, like this toughest mineral, and like they can cut through any like other material or like mineral. Perfection. Now, let me tell you before we move on, okay? So in Theravada traditions, I miss Paul, right? In, in Theravada traditions, right? Somehow, who are the central figures? Um, Buddha. Mm, uh, As human. Okay. Well, what do you mean by central? In in the in um, in Buddhism, monasticism. Okay, monasticism member, right? monks, no, right? Uh, so for lay people, they can offer the food to get married. So. They don't. They may not have much chance to attend enlightenment. They attend hardship. Understand that, right? But for higher traditions, both lay and monastics. Okay, you see the difference. And this one was different. More was more. Uh, I guess it's focused more on the teachings. Oh, and then every tradition focus on the tradition. Lay monasteries and even oh, monasteries and even what? Even when we talk about lay people, this is only one. Yeah, especially in, in the in the other traditions, uh, the role of woman is could not be concerned much, right? And in Mahana, yes, we, okay, we have a lot of nuns in monastery, but here, in this Raja Yana tradition, the diamond traditions, the woman role is so important that we will talk um, last week. Okay, so that's the difference. Uh, it's for everyone, and even it's for the heavy, heavy class, lower class, or high class. Make sense? 
this is so no no privilege at all. This is for everyone. Okay, so um, and who know? Uh, can you tell um, when uh, when did this Vajrayana tradition started? Oh, like start? six hundred years, like six hundred C whatever version. Uh, actually, it is uh, according to uh, Buddhist scholar, it start around um, the third century. Uh, but uh, it has become popular in the 5th century until 12. Um, that's the history of um, uh, Vajrayana tradition in, in India. Okay. Um, and it's mixed up with the Hinduism too. Who learned with Hinduism before? Some of you? Some elements. Some elements of um, of Hinduism, uh, and that's the last stage. Vajrayana Buddhism is the last stage of Buddhism in India, right? Okay. Um, all right. So let's uh, number two, please. Okay. Who does number two? No one does number two. Okay. Now, um, so we know that so Buddhism spread to China, especially during the Tang Dynasty. Who studied Chinese history before? No one. Oh, you know. So the Tang Dynasty start from I think from uh, seventh century, right? Seventh century from to ninth to tenth century. So Buddhism, as well as Tantric Buddhism, spread uh, from Ch from India to China uh, and from China to Japan. Um, this is uh, from India to, to China is around the seventh century by uh, the the two monks. This is the system name here. Uh, Vacha Bodhi, Amoga Vacha. Oh, before before we discuss further, now let me ask you: When you study final, when you study for test, for there, <coughs> do you have any secrets, any ways, like strategies, strategy, a secret or approach that you study that mm, that all the people would not recognize? <coughs> <coughs> Yeah, you understand? So, who play piano? Who play music? Okay, when you play music, right? There's some, it's an instrument there, but depend upon your skill, right? You have some, you have some ways, some tools, some techniques, you some approach that you play much uh, quicker, much um, beautiful than others. Okay. When you study too, right? When you study whichever subject, you have some tools, some ways that that you can you can uh, climb to the, the top to the candle pot. So that's why we have the secret uh, of the Vajrayana tradition in Buddhism. And you know, according to Buddhist scholar, um, somehow during the Buddha times, this type of tradition has not been popular. But you know, because the Buddha accept everyone, especially some Hindu people came and they they uh, they study Hindu tantra before they became um, Buddhist monk. So they brought with them uh, some of these traditions. That's why eventually it become a, um, uh, a traditions with Buddhism too. Um, and this is the last phase. And um, in China, yes, these two three monks they brought. Um, um, the esoteric uh, tradition from uh, India to China, but, but it's different from the Tibetan style um, in the way that um, they follow some kind of um, uh, text. Uh, it is quite different from from the Tibetan ways, and um, and where from China it spread to uh, Japan, it's called Shinkong. Uh, by this, by this monk, uh, and even Japan by this monk here. 
Kukai. If you have time, you can type his name on the uh, YouTube. This is uh, not documentaries, but they make the movie about him. Like uh, Dojun, uh, they make the movie about, about him, about them going to China to study Zen or Dojun and uh, Kukai to study uh, Diamond uh, or Vajrayana traditions in China. So they brought, he brought back that tradition to Japan to become one of the most important traditions nowadays. What do you call it? Shinkong. Shinkong Buddhism here. That's we we'll discuss next time. Okay? Alright. So, yes, we'll have number three, please. Yes. Um, so, the Tantric Buddhism, the theory of it is like, it's a more practical and more effective way to like reach enlightenment. And um, it also emphasizes the role of Bodhisattva, just like you said, how the monks are the most like central role. And um, it also like tends to favor like fierce deities and like other other like minority like gods. And there are also um, they also have like mantras and then mandalas that are like diagrams of meanings used in visualization practices and a lot of other rituals. And it's mostly like. <coughs> That's so, any difference between the goal of uh, Vahaya and Varajana? Is any different in goal? I mean, uh, sorry, People get confused. Yes? But there is no difference. So, what's the, what's the goal then? To achieve to the Buddhahood, right? Yeah. But this Mahayana tradition requires many lifetimes. But according to Vajrayana, they say that this is one lifetime. But um, that's that's why they they, uh, they uh, encourage people to practice. Um, and uh, yes, they talk about the two truths. Remember two truths: the conventional and the ultimate. And um, but they, they still practice what we call the Buddhist self path too. And later on, we will mention about the vows, the vow of um, Vajrayana. Or the, or the tantric uh, student, the tantric teachers, a master should abide. You, know, you have to have that kind of vows, um, commitments. Okay. All right. Um, now the next one, um, the characteristics or, or the the goal. Again, the goal of Vajrayana is to become Buddha, right? So they they practice this um, path. Uh, approach, you know, to achieve the Buddhahood, um, and their motivation is not for themselves. Right? To achieve Buddhahood is not for themselves, but for all, for the for the sake of all of sentient beings. That's why when they make the vows uh, to do the Buddhist practice, it's different from, you know, the uh, the black magic we discussed before, right? Mm. So uh, some people they use black magic, there's some some spell. Right, to harm other people, to get the other people money or so forth. That's why, but that's why in this tradition, this, this has a vow that, that you do the practice primarily for the benefit of others. You cannot harm other people. You can harm other essential beings. That's the motivation. Right. And of course, there's just many ways, many experience ways to help other people that we discussed before, like the way you you um you have your your friends or you have your um, your siblings to study, um, give them candies, uh, give them encouragement and so forth. Um, so that's a smooth way. Okay. Um, so um, let me let me show you this the vow, the, the vow of. Um, what they call here is Samaya. Here. A Samaya. Okay, let me show you this one. This is some root vows. Here. For example, if a teacher refuses to teach, that is considered as violating the vows. Right? And uh, and they they have they have to abide 
be refrained from non-virtue, we respect the body uh, for yourself and for others, or not, uh, I mean that, and, and uh, abide the rules of non-violence toward other social beings. That's that they're about. So especially in, in um, the Vajrayana tradition, this is so important. Now let me ask you, why is that? In the right tradition, uh, most time they don't make any vows. Of course, for, for Buddhist monks and nuns, yes, you need, they need to abide the monastic rules. That's some sort of vows for their commitment. But in Mahayana tradition, there's many cow vows. Um, uh, and there's, um, there, there's some vows that remember we talk about the uh, Amitabha Buddha, he made 48 vows, remember? In the class, someone wrote 28, no, there's 48 vows to establish the appearance so that people can go there. And for each uh, practitioner, Buddhist practitioner, they can make their own vows. Um, so, but especially in the higher, in the Vajrayana tradition, it's so important that you need to make the vows. Um, so, um, you, you, can have, you have seen Sim uh, Dalai Lama on movies, right? On television, right? You haven't seen him in person, right? When, they, when he conducts uh, Karajaka, you may not know. Uh, that's, mean that, that's some kind of. Um, Initiation is one of the important initiation. So people or practitioners need to make the vows too. For example, we make the vow to decide that mantra, the short mantra, 10 times per day, or 40, um, 21 times per day, and so forth. Depend, depend upon the guru or the teachers that you know, encourage students um, to do that kind of uh, practice. Okay. All right, so number five, you do number five? Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. You do number five? All right, you're welcome. Mm. Okay, the ritual. Okay, let me let me show you this, this short part. Mm. Here, what they call Kalachaka. Have you seen this in Nepal? I actually have a video of them doing this. What's that? I have a video of them doing this. They're just like having a celebration. Mm -hmm. And from... Um, you see? You see they use the long... I don't know. Trumpet. Is this? <laughs> Is this some tire? Huh? Uh, in, uh, I think in India. Uh, so they have performers, they have uh, this kind of dance. There's like monks. You see them? Bless us. But um, it's part of the ceremony. It's part of the initiation. Um, uh, if you watch further, why they do that type of performance? They decide some certain type of mantra. And you see that this is not. Yeah. 
down how it's not performance, this is a ritual. Alright, ritual. So it's in bulk in the 80s. Um, you see how they each of them handle uh, hand the handbell? Okay, let me ask you why. Well, in version uh, they <coughs> emphasize a lot of good ritual ceremony. Why? Why not in, yes, in uh, another why? Because of Hindu influence, I would say. Yes, one, one is, what, what else? Why? I think it's like a fast track. What's that? Fast track? Two. One, that's not one, two. What else? What else? To help them visualize the deities or whatever? Yes. Remember? Remember? Where's the, where's the, uh, the main practice in the Rav tradition? What's the main practice? Meditation. Uh, meditation. Vipassana. Alright. Vipassana. Okay. okay. And the main practice here is this samadhans. Samadha is some kind of vipassana, and plus some kind of uh, vows and this recitation um, and bowing. Yes? That's in Nepal. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I videotaped them. Oh, they, they dance on the top of the wooden tube? Of the what? This is the, the roof. Yeah. They stand on the roof too? No, well that's not the roof of like where they pray. Oh. This is like a... The platform. Yeah. Okay. But they did the same thing as that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, this pole. So in, uh, in Burma, you see um, monks, uh, nuns, they, they do a uh, prostration, bowing. 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 Do they do a lot at all? Uh, like bow. Oh, like bowing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do it. They do it. Yeah. Okay. Look, the, you mean like the monks? Mm -hmm. The monks. I'm, I'm talking about here about the ritual. Um, bowing. Yeah. 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 For lay people, right? You go to the temple, you bow to Buddha, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, in the high traditions, uh, like uh, when you go to the temple, right? Actually, uh, you see the nuns, they bow continuously. Well, I think for like uh, special rituals, like special celebrations, like Buddha's birthday or like the October, or, like, you know, quarterly events, they do like, Traditional um, like yeah, rituals, but usually for teachings before we, we recite like um, the heart sutra, and then we, we do three vows too, but it's not uh -huh. like it's not like exaggerated. You know, in in this Mahatradition, what well, we have a thick book. I don't know whether you know or not. The thick book has the names of. Ten more than ten thousand Buddha. The name of more than ten, uh, more than ten thousand names of the Buddha, the Bodhisattva, for people to, to bow. Yes. So um, every every month when we uh, have a, we uh, revere our actions and then we have to bow one hundred eight times. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, That's so who, who, who who are those uh, who are those uh, Buddhas? Buddhas that were in yeah, so, so they pick we up ten thousand Buddhas, but we only. Say one hundred eight. You know. Yeah, actually, uh, this is about thirty-two main one. They, oh, they yeah. extract from from that book, from, from the book that, oh, that um, okay. discuss about that list of about more than ten thousand names of the Buddhas. This and um, yes, this is the ritual. Okay, let me ask you: when when she's still there, sometimes it's boring, right? Is that right? That's why. That's due to where's, where where to come from. Is it some type of activities, some kind of um, movement? 
right? Uh, especially in in the bed, it's still cold. You understand that? Uh, so that's why they uh, they develop this kind of ritual um, for them to do for, for, for some kind of performance. Too. Okay, all right. So let's just move on to the sis, please. Lady, yeah, you're the missus, right? What do I keep doing? Wrong number. <laughs> What's that? I keep doing the wrong number. Oh, that's okay. So what's your doing? What's the number? I didn't do number six. I did Can you? I didn't do it. Oh, that's okay. But this is your writing here. Okay. Yes, it is. Oh, that's okay. Sorry. All right. Um, but next time, please remember to write out your name. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Where's the number six? Okay, yeah, that's just in I talk about that too, number six, even number seven too. Yeah, the vows and conduct. Um, so, you know, sometimes um, sometime many Westerners, they like uh, Vajrayana uh, traditions, uh, Tibetan traditions, because one thing is us, in the Tibetan tradition, um, people can, uh, can eat meat freely. You understand that? You know that? Yeah, monks now they can consume meat. Do you agree with that? No. Oh, of course. Yeah, no, of course, no. Because whenever you consume meat, you consume uh, other products, it's not easy for you to develop your compassion. Right? You, you can witness, even here we have mass production of meat, right? This is mass for human meat. You have seen that? You have seen that? Have you seen videos of them just like squishing the so, whole animals into um, yeah. oh, yes. mm. yeah. Did you eat meat before? Of course, I did. How was it hard for you to Not much. Not much. As much as you understand the root of the problem, as much as you recognize the suffering. Imagine some, someone, or even you cut your flesh. This is hard. Not talking about someone cut your hand. Uh, or break your legs, you see that? This is, if you eat, you recognize the suffering of others. You would not let to, you would not, you would not like to consume. That's why whenever I, I walk into the lay people house, I could just breathe because it smells terrible for people. What if, what if the animal is dead already? Well, people would not eat uh, dead animal already. Yeah, they would not eat it. No, like, if it's like, um, if it's accidentally ran over by a car. Yes, but still, it's not careful, right? Well, well, I've seen, it's already dead, yeah, I live, you know, I live in Indiana in the yeah. woods. I've seen many, many times, many deer were hit by cars, uh, land down on the road. It's just, you dare to go out and pick up the meat and then so on. Right? Uh, so anyway, so um, that's, you know, um, my master said that if you want to see where the, the fire into the wall start, look up on the table. On your table. Under the table? Not on your table. Uh, the food on your table. No. Right? The meat you consume. Right? The cow, the pig, the chicken and so forth. You consume from their suffering. They, they don't give their body. Voluntary. So in, in Buddhist tradition, especially in Buddhist tradition, especially in my high tradition, you sacrifice your life for others. You help others. It's as a Bodhisattva, remember the, the practice generosity, remember the tree path, remember? The first one is what? To give the body, the blood, and so forth, right? And to give money. Um, and the second one is to give um, the Dharma. Right? The first is to the other one to give um, but they call fearlessness. But anyway, so if you want to gain more merit, you need to give out. When you take in. When you take in or you harm others, animal or whoever or whichever, means you you cut off your blessing. Make sense? That's is, that's the basic principle. And that's why it's pure rare for me to visit the lay people house. But as I know sometimes when they walk into the lay people house and could not breathe. 
Y is male. You understand that? It's male of skin meat or fish and so forth. I couldn't handle that. It's, I have to if I want if I need to go. Anyway, so that that's what is talk about. But still in my high in the version especially the debate edition, someone someone complained to Dalai Lama too. If you talk about compassion, how could you still consume meat? But um, for the high lama, most of the time they are very few red The Dalai Lama eats meat? He says some sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes he, Why? He, he, he to submit you, but he encouraged people not to consume much because it's tradition. And I went to India, 1990. Yeah, I don't get it. Why would you eat meat? That's the point. Actually, let's this way. That's the tradition too. It's not easy to, to give up, you know, because the band is in high la high plateau. You know, and that is big cold place, and not easy to plant vegetables. So they get used of consuming meat. Well, but when they go, when when they went out to India and other places, they get used of that tradition. Yes, that's why many people complain. The only thing that people complain about the Tibetan tradition, and we study, we talk more. Okay, so um, seven now. We have three, four. Wow, two. Yes, you right. Three, seven. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, seven, please. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah, the vows. Oh, we talk more. I talk more for you, right? You can do, yeah, go ahead. What do you find? Number seven um, wants us to describe the vows and contests in the Chinese tradition. Number seven, right, sir? Mm -hmm. Okay, can you can, can you tell more? Yeah, so um, there. Are, well, I can find on the second secondary tantric vows. Yes, that's all I can find. Yeah, what happened? And then? um, so the so there's eight dick actions, and they're basically <laughs> promises to refrain from certain acts that could weaken ones like how you meditate meditate mm -hmm. and uh, and they also would hinder you on your progress along the tantra path path I can't say the first word a nature yoga something like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah one thing I want to mention about this okay for these two traditions in order to become Buddhist you just take two refuge right to the Buddha Dhamma and Sangha right then the Vajrasana the Ruru is more important. Why? So you know why? Because they know it all. Hmm? They know it all? What's that? Because they know it all? Yeah. What's the Guru? Like they know it all, right? Yeah, teacher. teacher. Oh, okay. Without teacher, you would not know Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha. That's what they, they like talk about. Like they know it all. Okay? <laughs> so that's that even in, in the... Uh, they go for the Ruru uh, on top of, top of the uh, Chippewa Chippewa too. And that's why in the, even in Zen traditions and in, in, in these uh, Rajana traditions, the relationship between student and teacher is pretty close, it's pretty important. Yes? But if the guru is a Buddha, wouldn't that be taking refuge in the Buddha? Kind of too. That, that's, that's why it's pretty close, it's pretty serious. Uh, the guru wouldn't claim to be a Buddha though. Not, not, they, okay. they're not supposed to claim, but, but the student View the rule, my teacher asked me that. Has the gu guru broken from the cycle of samsara? No, no, this is just... Um, so, he yeah. is, so he's not a Buddha? Not a Buddha. Okay. But, but as, um, as a student, they need to view the rule as a Buddha, as a holy... Isn't that blasphemy? Um, huh? Can they do that though? <coughs> if he's not a Buddha? Though? To show the respect, understand that? 
that's a point. The shoulders bent. So, um, so, so, so. okay. Uh, number eight. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. <coughs> well, there are four classes, mm -hmm. and the first one is Kriya, which focuses on external practices and focusing on the people's questions. Uh, it's an emphasis on being a vegetarian and avoiding hard foods like onion and garlic. The second one is Charya. Mm -hmm. Charya. It's a balance of internal and external processes. Uh, it's the least popular and consists of visualizations of yourself as a Buddha. Okay. And with the Buddha in front of you. That's all? Oh, I have to go. Yeah, that's all. I don't know, there's, there's yoga. It's internal and focuses on on hand gestures called called uh, mudras. Can you tell me? Can you tell me more? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, I'm not sure how to pronounce it though. Mm -hmm. You have to know. Just just try these three. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, the last one, it works with the energy systems mm -hmm. in the body mm -hmm. and it deals with the clear light level of the mind. So. Mm -hmm. That's all? Yeah, yeah that's, that's all I got. So all right, let me go on. Let's see. Um, one is, is action command tantra, another one is performance tantra, the other one is yoga tantra. Um, that's emphasize on the first one emphasize on the ritual. That's that's why they play, right? That's why they perform. Judy, that's your question. The first one, that's uh, Kiyat Yoga, right? The ritual performance. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So and second one, Yoga Tantra. Yoga Tantra. Yeah. 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 Yeah
special emphasis is placed on rituals such as ritual bathing, and they each tantra has deities associated with it. And for the first one, it's there's three families. There's the Tathagata Buddha, the Padma, Lotus, and Bhadra Thunderbolt. That's, that's the three. And there's examples of these deities. There's a Manchu Juri, who is one of the main bodhisattvas in Mahayana tradition. Chenzreg, which is also another name for the bodhisattva of compassion. And then Bhadra Yapani, another Mahayana bodhisattva. The second outer tantra is a Tarya Tantra. It shares rituals but focuses more on meditation to obtain liberation. Bari Chana, who is a celestial Buddha, is a deity for this one. And Bari Chana is considered to be the Dharma body of Siddhartha Gautama. The third outer tantra is Yoga Tantra, which where external rituals are less emphasized and the tantra is more focused on inner meditation. Here the Tantra is empowered by the five Buddha families and the Vajra master. And this is where the person must uh, take on the commitments to the Buddha families and complete the Tantric vows. So the inner Tantras are, um, they're the Maha Yoga, Anu Yoga, and Anti Yoga are the three. And uh, they're part of a, um, they're part of like a larger group of nine tantras, so it's three divisions of three. And let's see, so the Ati Yoga is known as the Great Perfection. And so it kind of focuses on like maintaining your natural state, if that makes sense. And then, uh, let's see, so that is the. Uh, Okay, so the Maha Yoga is the first of the three inner tantras, and that's to, uh, well, that's about the development stage, I guess, and kind of uh, like cultivating your, is it like knowledge, I think? And then with the Anu Yoga, that would be, that's the second tantra, and that is related to, uh, that's more like about scripture. Yeah. Okay, now let me show you this. Oh, you look at this picture, English. Is that what do you think? Have you seen this kind of image right before, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Why? Why do they have this kind of image? This is uh, the union of male, female, or even. Uh, what do you think about this, this kind of image? Remember? Yeah, this is this more remember. It's not in physical way, okay? So this is just um, it, it just the simplest way to remember to remind us that we need to have the union of male and female. Uh, in the harmonies, not in physical way. That's why many, many Western, many American people, they, they have misconception about the Tantric uh, traditions. Um, yeah. So um, this, especially in this, in this uh, Vajrayana tradition, this emphasizes on emptiness too, right? But uh, somehow Dom Dom Pegasus is in the physical realm, okay? Yeah. All right, so number nine, you're number nine, right? Who does number nine? We just did number nine. Oh, number 10? Uh, yeah, yeah, please. Uh, Anuraga Yoga Tantra, as taught by the new schools of Tibet, is considered to be the highest class. Yeah. Uh, but the kind of the Galakpa tradition, in this Tantra, the Buddha taught instructions for transforming sensual pleasure into a quick enlightenment, and by uh, gathering and dissolving the inner winds into the central channel through meditation techniques. Uh, it requires empowerment from a learned group, uh, guru, uh, the impl implementation of various meditative, uh, meditative things, uh, things, yogas, and ritual use to uh, achieve enlightenment and transform yourself. And you're supposed to um, uh, 
realize the mind stream as a sort of meditational deity? So what's the purpose of that mm, techniques? To transport, to transport the design. Remember when we talk about the affordable truths, the core, the, the roots of the problems, right? The root of the the suffering are the design, is the, the craving and anger. In Vajrayana, the reason they want to transform that. Use the five design. I use the fire of anger to transform anger. You have you have the same energy. Remember the day that you had you are so angry, right? You may you may slam on the table and so forth. Instead of using that energy, right? The same energy you can apply to different energy to help other people. Because that's, that's what what they they say. Fire transform the fire. Desire transform the desire. You go beyond the desire. You understand them? So remember sometimes, let's say if you, you're craving for, let's say, ice cream, okay? So if you consume uh, ice cream too much until the point would wrap, what? You'd have it, is that right? <coughs> understand that? So that's, that's in the, in the damage uh, uh, path, the damage of uh, Vajrayana tradition, that they use an approach, right? Okay? All right, so last one. You are the last one. Yeah, go ahead, lady. Um, death yoga. Um, death yoga, and what was related to death yoga? Vajrayana. What's about? Um, What's the difference? What is different between uh, visualization or uh, yeah, visualization of a uh, dead corpse and so forth into in, in this uh, death yoga? What's about? What's different? Um, well, what I got from what I research is that it helps the practitioner prepare for death mm -hmm. and um, at the same time as death the mind is in the subtle state and um, so it can open your mind to enlightenment if it's used skillfully um, if you meditate on emptiness um, it allows the practitioner to destroy their ignorance and the imprints of ignorance that are obstructions to ominence and there are three stages that you can reach enlightenment during death using death yoga, which is at the end of the death process, and during the bardo period, which is the in between period and <coughs> the process of rebirth. Do you um, want to add more, lady? Want to add more? Um, I want to hear what you said. Um, I know more about Vajrayana than death yoga. They prepare for death, right? Yeah, you're working on the, the band book of death, right? Uh, I mean, you have yeah. to understand this. Is that related to the rituals that they do for whenever they bury people? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they will like uh, put a corpse up and then people will meditate on it in order to help uh, the spirit reach enlightenment. <coughs> um, so they'll do other things like eat a feast and other things in order for Wait, like... What? Feast. Yeah, they'll eat like a feast, so if they're there and the spirit tries to eat, it won't be able to because they say like the spirit comes back in order to try to get more of its old habits or something like that. You walk, you, you get this hoa? No. No? Hoa is a way to trans, to transform the consciousness right after all the battle, after someone passed away. If you have the skill, you can transform that uh, uh, that uh, consciousness to whichever plane of the system you want to. Let's so let's say if you want to go to Buddha land, if you use to you know the power um, techniques, you can transform, you can transmit your your own consciousness to the Buddha land, or even to back to the, the human reaction. So that's that's it. Practice, yes. It separates the, um, the course and the subtle. Yeah, it's separate the course and the, the subtle. Let me show you a short video clips about how they how they uh, do the pole wow, okay? I know. <laughs> Kempo Sanjay showed us another movie that his students had filmed at the end of a poem meditation. During the poem, the participants learn to send their consciousness at the moment of death to a realm of meaning and joy. 
As an outer sign of successful practice, a small opening on the skulls of the participants is produced, through which the consciousness leaves the body at the moment of death. In Tibet, at the end of the poem, a blade of grass is put into this hole to demonstrate the successful results of the meditation. No way. No. Why? <laughs> Why? I thought I'd say no where, because I know like they should know. They should know where they should know where, they where they punch. Yeah, they should but it's a needle. Like yeah, acupuncture no, acupuncture is a needle, so it can like go into the skin, but how does it like I'm pretty sure it's like a sharp it's like a hard blade of grass. Okay, but a, a like a blade of grass is still like <laughs> like not like a needle. <laughs> Can it can poke, but can it go through? And obviously, it can. that's fine. Right. That's why we have that question. It's freaking um, weird. So it's it weird. Um, no. Let's go through the school. No, they don't do surgery. No, no they surgery. just go through the school. Like, like meditating. Okay. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> All right. So we have only one week uh, before. Um, the holiday, please uh, try. Okay, try to do try to do uh, your work. All right. So thank you. So I uh, see you next uh, Tuesday.